everyone, my name is Jolene Schaefer. I'm the Marketing Coordinator for SWK Technologies. I'd like to welcome you to our webinar, Extend the Value of Acumatica, Automate Processes and AP and Beyond, presented by Laura Lykin and Igor Cross of Alltech. A little housekeeping before we get started. Everyone has been placed on mute to keep the background noise down. However, you can submit any questions you have throughout the webinar. To submit a question, look for the question, question section in your GoToWebinar. We will answer all questions at the end of the presentation. We are recording the presentation and it will be distributed tomorrow to all attendees as well as to those who registered but were not able to attend. Please take a moment at the end of our presentation to answer our two question survey. With that said, we appreciate you taking time out of your busy day to attend our webinar. We're here to help you get the most out of your software solutions and help you find an easier way to run your business by providing you software and industry knowledge, tools and support whenever you need it. We've invited Alltech here today because they are the industry experts on document management solutions. So whether you're here doing research for a new solution or you're just here to learn, we'd like to encourage you to ask any questions throughout the webinar. Lastly, as a quick reminder, SWK is constantly sharing updates and software tips and tricks on our social media channels. So we encourage you to follow us on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Without further ado, I'll hand it over to Laura. Thank you and good morning, everyone. Let me share my screen. Sorry, Julie, can you just transfer again? It's going to the wrong screen, I'm sorry. Of course. Looks great. Is it, oh, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for your time. Um, so my name is Laurel Shin, and today we're going to talk about um, how to extend the value of um, the features and functionality beyond uh, Acumatica. Okay. So we're going to talk about digital, digital transformation because you know most of us were working remotely, and so here's how we're going to introduce solution to help accommodate you from working from, uh, from, uh, from anywhere, really. We're also going to talk about the top reasons, uh, why, why DocLink, because there's a lot of solutions out there, but why DocLink? And then also, how can DocLink uh, be utilized within all of your departments? Then um, moving on is, what set DocLink apart from some of the features and functionality that you might have in Acumatica or maybe in other in-house software application. We're also going to be giving you a live demonstration today on uh, touch on AP automation, uh, contract management, and sales order processing. Just a few areas uh, because of a limit of time. So with the current uh, situation is we're moving to a, a remote wo a workforce. And the challenges you know, for most people is how do I access my documents and information uh, from, from home, from anywhere? So um, with Acumatica and DocLink is the ability to extend the tools to allow you to connect your documents and your information to the people that need to be working on those documents and streamlining your process and able to have better control of your, you know, your, uh, the management of your documents and the workflow process. Also, a way to automatically deliver those documents to ex external source, like your vendors and customers. Okay, uh, let's take a quick poll. Okay, um, let's find out is how many of you today, how are you storing your documents today? So with the polling, is uh, one of the questions is, are you, are you still storing in file cabinets? What about off-site storage? Are you paying a company to store your files and manage your files? Or are you uh, 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 scanning documents and storing in a network share folder? Maybe you have an in-house software application that have a document management functionality. And then, of course, you know, the basement, the, we call it the dungeon, right? So take a moment and share with us how uh, you're storing your documents today. 
All right, Laura, and I think we have most of the results in. So it looks as though we have a strong number in the network file sharing area as well as file cabinets with a few of our attendees with in-house software applications. Perfect, perfect. So for those of you who are storing on, that, on the net sh network share file, you are using some form of document management. That's awesome, okay? It, it's one way of going paperless. However, over time, you're gonna see, you're gonna be storing more and more documents into the network share folder. So searching become a challenge or able to secure, so uh, to eliminate people from actually moving or deleting documents um, or restrict, uh, restricting uh, certain people to access certain files within that folder in the network, right? So with uh, some of the top trend and needs that you know, customers are, we're hearing from customers today is to, you have multiple offices, locations throughout the world. Okay, and the idea is to centralize the storage of all your documents in one place, yet able to access it from anywhere remotely uh, or security to your documents. You know, you, some of you might be need have a need for HIPAA compliancy uh, to secure so certain people can only do certain function or tasks to certain documents. There's also different ways of how you capture documents because you have hard copies. There's also documents that are coming in by email. How can we minimize and streamline that process and make it easier for you? At the same time, minimizing that data entry, because one of the biggest complaints we hear all the time is doing that duplicate data entry when all the, most of the data is already within Acumatica, you know, your customer information, your vendor's information, and so forth. Also is um, the integration with Acumatica. You want to be able to access those documents within Acumatica, but also outside of Acumatica as well. A solution that, that is scalable, you know, you want to start small, getting your toes wet, and then able to expand that system uh, enterprise-wide and able to go paperless enterprise-wide. So there are many different reasons why, you know, going uh, paperless. Okay, so the big advantage to DocLink is you can start it in one area or two area, and most of the time it start with the AP side or sales order processing side. But once you own the system, once you go paperless, I promise you that other departments are going to see how efficient you are, how fast you're able to access your information, how secure it is. They're going to want to go paperless as well. So with DocLink is once you have the system, you can then expand that system to other department use. And here are some examples from contract management to HR onboarding to expense report, um, if, you know, if you're a corporate credit card processing. Okay. And so it's all, it's one system to store in all of those documents. Okay, And those documents can be, be in any format from Word file to Excel file to PowerPoint to video file to AutoCAD drawings. What about different industry? Well, you know, here's a list of a few industries that we find that have the most need uh, because they have very paper intensive and like healthcare, you know, it's compliancy, HIPAA requirements, right? Um, there's many different government regulated policy that you need to abide by. But at the end of the day is every company have a need to go paperless and automation because you have documents and information to manage and to access. So how does DocLink work? Think of DocLink as a your virtual filing uh, filing uh, cabinet, okay, a, a virtual filing system. So when you have document to store to the system, we categorize it. What is it? Is it a contract? Is it an invoice? Is it a purchase order? Is it a, a job application? What is it? Okay. And along with that, there are different property fields, and those property fields is for searching purpose. So we're able to uh, you can store those documents in the system and there's no misfiling of documents because we don't care where it's stored, right? And, but we're able to go in and let's say you go, find me all the documents that has to do with the supplier ABC Corp. You type in the company name, it goes in, DocLink goes in, look for those documents that has the name ABC Corp and bring it all together for you. So we don't care where it's stored in the system. 
also is for security purpose as well because then we're gonna be able to define it down what type of documents does the user have access to and what can they do and see within the system. Additionally, within your ERP, you're able to view documents within your ERP as well. So let's say that you're in your uh, in, in the bill and you're looking, you're typing in uh, invoice number, okay? Show me the invoice with invoice number 1552. It just goes into DocLink, look for that document based on that invoice number and display it in the ERP. And what about, you know, tying of documents together? Let's say a, a, a vendor calls that call up and say, hey, I haven't received payments yet. Okay, you can go in and type in the invoice number and you're going to want to show, show me all the invoice, okay, tied to that one payment. Because sometimes when you pay a payment, it's associated with multiple invoices. Well, the system will go and look for all those invoices tied to that payment and bring it up for you. It's that easy. So at the end of the day is with your virtual filing cabinet, which is DocLink, we're going to allow you to able to secure your document. We're going to link different documents together and you're able to access your documents 24-7 from anywhere. So let's take a quick another polling question. What are your uh, main ch uh, challenges or pain point with the management of your documents and information, uh, information today? Is it, are you having to do a lot of touching and moving of those documents and filing of documents? Is it, you know, having to walk those documents around for review and approval and not able to track those documents and know where it is in the process? because you have certain people that are bottlenecks or having to spend a lot of time doing data entry. Or what about lost documents? You're not able to find those documents. And I'm sure some of you may have issues in all of those areas, but let's see what the result is. We have a pretty even split between current process requires a lot of moving of documents and we spend a lot of time doing data entry. There we go. Okay. So like I said, using technology like DocLink to streamline your process. We're going to show you tools today, how you're able to minimize that data entry and using the workflow, not having to you know walk those documents around. Uh, uh, and able to route it automatically, to able to prove off those documents automatically, and able to file, and no filing of documents because the system is going to file it for you. Okay. So today we're going to show you a demonstration. We're going to start with AP automation because, you know, we find that that's the most trouble spot in most organizations. We can't find the invoice. Uh, we're always late in payment because Joe is always delay in approving in the, the uh, invoices. We're spending too much time doing duplicate data entry, or we have to wait till we get the copy of the purchase order or the receiving document before we actually can do a matching and pay. We're also going to show you contract management as well, and also sales order processing. So with the eight, with the AP process. Here's a typical process. Now, some of you may do purchase orders, right? And then, of course, needing to send that out to your, to your vendors, and then you do the receiving. This is, like I said, a typical process. Well, a lot of these processes here can be automated using our technology, which we're going to introduce to you today. So we're going to start the demonstration where, if for example, of those that are creating purchase order in Acumatica, how we can automatically capture the purchase order into the system. We're also going to show you, uh, um, introduce to you about OCR, the ability to read the data on your invoice and able to do automated matching against your purchase order and against your receiving. So no more manual matching. Okay. We're also going to do the handling of your receiving, okay, able to store all those receiving documents into the system and get links to the purchase orders. And then also with our integration with Acumatica, we're going to show you how you can actually do coding in DocLink without the need to have access to Acumatica. And with our workflow, now, I, you know, Acumatica does have workflow, but many organizations um, have, uh, you know, comprehensive workflow process with business rules, like dollar amount business rules, or base, maybe based on GL code, or maybe based on vendors or department or um, segment. 
that it has to go to certain people for review and approval. So we're able to apply those business rules and enforce those rules to automate the, uh, the, the routing and the approval. Then, of course, is the processing of those invoice in um, Acumatica and how you and um, along with the payment and how you're able to access those documents within Acumatica. And we're going to show you how you can easily find those documents in both Acumatica and within DocLink. Okay. So, with that said, we're going to pass this over to Igor, who is going to be conducting a live demonstration today for you. Um, now, like I said, keep in mind we have limited of time, so he's just going to show you the highlights. Okay, and starting with how can we how can we automatically capture purchase order uh, into your virtual file cabinets without the need to print and and um, scan. Perfect. Thank you, Laura. So uh, now, as Laura mentioned, our journey is going to start in the purchase order screen in Acumatica. And uh, all of you are pretty much very uh, very aware about how this process starts. You'll probably go to your purchases and then open your purchase order screen from where you have number of uh, purchase orders ready to go or maybe creating a new one. How you would get to the actual purchase order doesn't make much difference as long as you have the purchase order, that the one that you would like to distribute to one of your suppliers as well at the same time store it and have it trackable and use it later for matching purposes so this is where our entire journey is going to start as you can see this is a standard purchase order screen but there are a couple of things that are added already to uh, to this view so what as uh, Laura mentioned we already added the view the do view documents button where users can view store documents in DocLink when necessary and secondly from here directly we can uh, through a reporting we can print the purchase order directly into DocLink to make sure that we can view documents at the back end in the document management solution by printing this document so I'm going to hit print I'm going to select the printing again and it's going to the ERM printer. So by uh, printing to the ERM printer, I'm doing two things at the same time. First one, I am storing this purchase order and all metadata associated with it directly to DocLink Depository. This will enable us to later link one or multiple invoices to this purchase order and conduct the matching. And when we do the receiving, we'll be conducting, of course, the three-way match between the invoice to the purchase order to packing slips that we get and deliver that purchase order to our vendor, to the supplier who's supposed to fulfill it. So let's do exactly that. So I selected my own printer and I hit print. That's pretty much it. That's all users are going to do. They printed it and at the same time at the back end, system generates an email when the document is received that is distributed to the supplier. If we take a quick look at our, uh, at our email box, I will quickly refresh that and we will be getting, uh, the an email will be sent to a vendor through an output manager where associate purchase order is attached to it. So this is the purchase order that we generated from Acumatica and it has been sent to our supplier that's who's supposed to fulfill it. And at the same time, that order is of course uh, stored in DocLink Depository, as I mentioned. Now let's take a step back and uh, uh, now look at what's going to happen when you would be getting documents associated with this purchase order, specifically invoices to fulfill it. Um, in the modern day and age, of course, we have a couple of methods of receiving invoices. The most uh, kind of prominent and the most popular one is, of course, just send it via email, send it to an email address and uh, register it from there. And this is exactly what DocLink solution can do for you. Uh, we can uh, register documents from a dedicated email address, for example, invoices at myoutlink.com and goes without saying that in cases of uh, other companies that would be a dedicated email address at their company, invoices at uh, abccompany.com, that they designated for this purpose. And all invoices sent as attachments to that specific email address are going to be registered and brought into the system for very important step, which is going to be application of business logic using optical character recognition. As one of the challenges that you presented and challenged us today is the time spent 
entering and matching the data. And this is what we're going to combat today as well. This is what would be one of the methods. Another method is, of course, going to be an option to uh, use a traditional, more traditional method of getting paper documents, because both of these methods coexist today still uh, in variety of proportion different companies have different proportion some may get 80 percent via email and 20 percent via paper other companies share this proportion 50 50 so we're going to look at how this can be done also via scanner and via scanner it's a very simple process where users would uh, for example take uh, two invoices and scan them in the folders this is what I'm doing right now. I'm just quickly replicated the scanning into a folder by placing two images into a folder. So somebody took two documents, put them in the hop of a scanner and hit the scan button. So what's the main difference? Of course, the email registration is way better as in the email registration queue, um, users don't participate in that process. Uh, they um, the, the job of registration is done for them automatically by a service at the background where we monitor that email address for incoming emails with transactions and as soon as we get one we bring it into the workflow and uh, start the next process that we're going to look at. With the scanning, as you can see, users would be uh, would be um, obligated to actually scan the documents and into a folder. But from that moment, when that scanned image is generated, will going to take over as well. Now, um, next step in this process is going to be application of optical character recognition, and uh, users are going to uh, use our station called verification station, which is designed specifically for that purpose. So users are going to open verification station where documents are shown them in the common queue. So we have a common queue of document just right there on the top and the latest one, it's a two document batch where we have two documents that have been registered today. Uh, and uh, what we need to do is just to click on that and open that batch to process and start uh, our review uh, when the system recognized and extracted the data for us. A couple of things occur automatically when this workflow is utilized. First of all, uh, documents are automatically separated on the PO and non-PO. We have uh, two available profiles in my workflow, uh, PO and non-PO invoices, as you can see. And based on the presence, or in this example, as this is a non-PO invoice based on the absence of the PO number, system is smart enough to, um, uh, uh, to extract the data automatically. And of course, it is smart enough to automatically extract the data for you, header footer details in the case of the uh, non-PO invoice, and of course, header footer and line item details in an instance of a purchase order invoice. And this is done using the optical character recognition and smart capture. It can learn on the go using self-learning technology. You can correct any kind of errors using the interactive interface. And of course, the images are fully digitized. This means that when you point to values, like let's say right now I'm pointing to the purchase order right there, system uh, is enabled with a fully digitized image, so you don't need to uh, type and key from the image when making any corrections. You can just point and click on the value and it's going to be populated into the field of interest. When users are getting these images to this verification station, they are only handling exceptions. If there are no business rule violations on a document or multiple documents in the batch, that document is not going to arrive to this interface. It will land in the next step in the workflow process that we're going to look at in the moment. So what users need to do is they need to look at questionable characters like this one. If something was not recognized and the system is not uh, confident on the confident level in that specific character. And when we are done with that, we also need to look at business rule violations. Like in this example, a system informs us that it cannot conduct a three-way match because this purchase order number seems to be wrong and we can clearly see that one of the characters with, uh, requires correction and when we do that correction, now we can uh, confirm that that item exists, that the quantities and prices on that purchase order and on the packing slip associated with that, the information that we got from the receiving side as we do have two-way integration with the ERP system and the receiving will be done in Acumatica it's way better and uh, it, it's um, and you will be um, able to match this information two-way uh, to the packing slip and to the purchase order. When 
the document, uh, documents are verified and validated, we're ready to go. So data is extracted for you, we automated that, we automatically register these images from um, email sources, and now we're ready to send them to a workflow. And this is what I'm going to do, I'm going to hit send, and we're going to take this to the next step. So when images uh, and, and invoices are verified and validated, they will land in the Docklink workflow. And this is where users are going to take over and start the process of GL coding, approval cycles, etc. And we're going to have a look at that right now. So I'm going to log into Docklink as administrator. And uh, this is the typical uh, web interface that our clients use to access their files, to conduct advanced searches, and of course, run workflows, run version control, things like that. And we are interested specifically in the workflow tab right now, where we are going to start this entire process of coding. So I'm going to select my workflow, and uh, just a quick note, um, as Doclink is a fully enterprise level document management solution, you can automate not only accounts payable process, but you can automate handling of any document types. I have a couple of workflows created that are associated with very specific life cycles of documents, but that can be infinitely expanded to other department, HR, uh, services, uh, human resources, etc. So all of that is a possibility. Right now we're interested specifically in accounts payable processing and unprocessed as this is where our invoices are going to land for the start of handling. And I'm going to hit search because I would like to see a list of files that are requiring my attention. And when we look at our list right now, we can clearly see a couple of documents in the queue and we have the latest one uh, available for us for handling right now. So we can select one of the bills that we have in the queue uh, for the purchase order. And uh, in this example, if we have a quick look, we can see that if there is uh, the bill, we have multiple or single additional documents associated with it presented to us. And from the screen, we can also see a snippet of a document to quickly verify if this is the one we would like to work on. Now, uh, same idea is applied for uh, non-PO invoices, so we have a non-PO invoice right here, and this is one. Uh, this is the one we're going to use for an example uh, to process and apply the GL account allocation and push it through the workflow to demonstrate to the approval side of things. So what users need to do from here, they're going to go ahead and use our smartphone toolkit to generate a distribution stamp. That's the tool right there on the top of the screen. This is what I'm going to start, and from here, uh, we're going to start creation of our distribution stamp. So I'm going to hit create and the process is going to start. Some of the data is immediately populated automatically for me. The information that came from the OCR engine, such as vendor information, vendor name, vendor ID, invoice number, invoice total, things like that. And I would be specifying other information about GL distribution stamp. And remember, Docklink is a two-way integrated with uh, Acumatica Therefore, we are replicating your screen completely from the entry perspective. I'm specifying my uh, uh, my posting period, terms of the sale. Uh, terms of the sale can be retrieved based on the vendor as well. It can be a free-flowing or automatically populated based on the vendor selection. This is one of the business rules that we can apply, as well as specifying the taxation information. Now, we're getting to the most fun part, which is creation of the lines of distribution. And to do that, you simply need to hit add and start adding the lines by uh, specifying the product, accounts, and things like that. So when we hit, let's say again, the uh, looking glass, and from here, we can see the lookup directly into the general ledger account of Acumatica. And this list can be tailored and shrunk, for example, if you would be willing to, for example, to limit the access of certain departments to specific GL account allocations, right? Specifying that accounts payable can see only this type of GL accounts and inventory codes, and another department can see different set of GL accounts. In this example, I'm going to select the list of administrative charges, specify my line quantities, specify my unit price, which is pretty much like uh, the total of the invoice in this example, and um, allocate 
specifically either taxable or non-taxable. I'm replicating uh, the distribution stamp existing right now in Acumatica in our environment. And we are done, right? So we created the distribution allocation and it's ready right now to be sent to the, to the personnel responsible for that approval. Before I do that, I need to create a permanent stamp by clicking stamp right here. And this will burn in and create us the second page to this document. And let me fold this right now. So um, the conventional method in the, in the old days when people were putting actual rubber stamps on files. In this example, if I have a look, we now have the second page. I need to go back to the previous document and select the second page to it. So yeah, right here. So we have the second page where we have the full distribution uh, imprinted and created and attached to a document as a second page for the audit trail. And this is a very powerful controlling tool to know when and what kind of changes have been made to a file. And this is also very handy information for our next step, which I'm going to demonstrate to you right now. Document obviously requires approval and from here, users can send as an ad hoc route to a specific approvers the document, this, this invoice to let's say IT manager, president, et cetera, depending on who's supposed to handle it, or a system can apply automatic business rules and wrote the document, let's say, based on the total amount or based on the vendor who sent it to you. As this invoice is more than $25,000, I'm going to send it to a president for approver and hit send. And system automatically brings the next document in the queue for me from the common queue. So I can continue just clearing the common queue, applying the GL account allocations, etc. As you probably guessed, the next step for us is going to be the email approval as uh, when documents are ready to be approved and as we would like to streamline this process, people will be getting notifications via email sp uh, specifying for them that you have documents that you need to handle, approve and give your approval notice, for example. Uh, typically, there are uh, two main methods of how approvers notifications are received. In this example, we just have a very simple email indicating for the user, hey, uh, Mr. Don, uh, our president, you have a, a document to approve. You can launch your uh, document client and approve it there. Or, and this is by far more popular method, is that when you get a summary report about a document, where you have data tokens, such as the total amount, vendor invoice number, thing like that. You have a copy of the invoice attached to it, where we of course have the second page for ease of approval. So director or president can look at these and say, yes, everything is correct. I don't need to make any changes. And immediately from an email, you can hit approve, approve with a note, deny, deny with a note, and send the document through the complete approval cycle. So from here, we're going to hit approve with a note. I'll specify that we need to uh, pay this invoice ASAP and submit my note and send it to approved for payment status. So this process can have multiple approval steps or just and how complex the approval is supposed to be, you dictate completely and it can be tailored and customly configured to your liking. One approval step, multiple approval steps, multiple or single approval steps based on business rules, total amounts of a document, GL account allocations or both. It is your choice. You're only limited by your imagination in this. Now, when documents are ready to be, uh, ready to be exported, if we kind of take a step back to our workflow. And now we can look at accounts payable workflow process, but not on process status, but approved documents. In the approved queue, we can see the documents that we processed and we have our invoice just right here available for us. We can have a quick look at it or we can actually open and see it with the approval stamp. So for example, I'm going to select this document and hit open and right here, uh, we have our document and uh, we have our notes available and our president uh, approved it to be processed and paid as soon as possible. So from here as accounts payable department uh, knows that this document can be paid, the data is going to be exported to Acumatica and all invoices are landing, uh, you probably already guessed where, they are going to accounts uh, AP department to bills and adjustments and all new transactions are created directly right here. So the, uh, the people who are processing these documents, you can very easily open the document that has been exported 
uh, and stored in the system right here and from this screen directly if later on acquired now users as we kind of went through the entire cycle we can utilize the view documents button so from here we can hit view documents and we'll be brought back to the document in question through the viewer interface it's a very fluent completely interconnected environment where users have full control over the workflow and the steps of the approval as well as complete audit trail of these processes and transactions and when we need to go back at any moment we can utilize our advanced searches where users can for example specify that we have some uh, we have specific accounts bills in the system that we can search for and as Laura was pointing to when we are searching for documents we can specify criteria or use a drill down system when for example we are looking for um, what kind of uh, check has been used to pay a specific bill let's say when we have the paid bills let's say the bill um, right here we can always uh, uh, select that specific check and drill down on the check and see the documents associated with that check and it goes uh, both or two ways and from this screen I can select both of these documents and open them for my uh, review side by side so um, system uh, as right now we have two documents open we have the check and we have the bill and if you want to see them in the vertical tiles position you can also do that just like that to see both documents side by side um, this is a very powerful solution to have full control over your document for the auditing purposes when your uh, when your supplier is going to call you and say hey I have this invoice um, was it paid I haven't received the payment you can always go back easily find an invoice easily find the associated invoice and present them with the uh, with both of these at the same time indicating the time and date when this check has been printed and stored from Alchematica and when you're printing the check you probably already guessed as well you can print it and store it directly into DocLink same way as we've done with the POs and absolutely in the same way if necessary you can run it through a workflow um, just again to be mindful of the time um, I will uh, will we'll carry or carry on and I will pass the word back to Laura thank you so much Igor so like I said this is just a little taste into AP automation it can do you know your process may be a little bit different um, but we can definitely um, see here give you a more in-depth demonstration Okay, so next is like I said, here's an example of a, one of our customer by you know by going paperless and using DocLink, they have uh, 18 different clinics uh, locations, and by going uh, with automation and using our workflow, they were able to expedite their approval process and reducing you know eight, saving 85 percent of their time of tracking and trying to find those documents and you know getting it approved on time. And as for searching, it's like literally in seconds, they can now go in and search uh, without having to, you know, go to the uh, to um, the warehouse or walking, you know, to different levels or different buildings to find documents. And also is that the time, um, the hours that they save from beginning to end really is about 75% of their uh, AP time. So next is we're going to give you an example of contract management. Now that you have the system, okay, is another big news of the system is contract management. Now, some customer just, you know, they want to just store uh, their executed contract for storage and retrieval only, which is fine. Okay. And able to track the life cycle of the contract, like when it expires and when the retention period is up, the system can send you auto alerts to let you know of those, you know, uh, those uh, upcoming events. Okay. And, but also is the searching is able to go in and search, you know, and find uh, all the contract pertaining to specific subject matter. So storage and retrieval. But then also is because DocLink does include version control, check in, check out capability, because it does allow you to store files in any format. Uh, you can a customer store the ex, you know the draft contract into the system and able to go through the workflow approval and editing of the contract. And then finally, is the able to fully go paperless by um, uh, signing the, uh, the contract uh, via uh, DocuSign. Uh, then also, if you want to go further than that, is we can create a template of your in-house contracts. 
uh, uh, electronically as well. So for those that you know, store the executed contract into the system, you can go in and say, hey, buy me all the contract anytime the word all check is mentioned anywhere on the page. Okay. And so there we have type in the word con uh, all check and folks, literally seconds, it will bring up all the documents here. In this case, we have four contracts that contain the word all check. That is well, one of the very few solutions that have that capability. And also is ability to track and um, know what the contracts in the process. So example, you have a draft contract, it's in Word format. You store that into DocLink and now you wanna route it to, let's say the CFO for review and editing of that contract. The CFO get notified, the CFO who's about to hop on a plane to go to a conference can just check that contract um, out and um, able to review and approve uh, via email just like we did for the invoice, okay? Is the documents attached? They can review it, they can approve and deny directly from email. But if they wanna work on it, they then can, like I said, here's an example of the contract in Word format. You can just check it out. Once you check it out, you save a copy to your desktop and the system will lock that contract so no one else can work on it. The purpose of version control is to mi limit uh, or uh, eliminate multiple people from working on the same document at the same time. Once you're done, you check it back in. Once you check it back in, the system will create version number two, the day and time and who worked on it, and so on and so on. And then finally, when you have the final contract, you then you with our integration with DocuSign, DocuSign will send out an email to the sign, all the sign, signers, okay? And they just click on that review document button in the email. It opens up to the document. They click on start, take them directly to the spot and the page where they need to sign. They place the electronic signature. Once they're done, click on finish. And then DocuSign will get an executed copy of that contract and all will automatically store it into DocLink. So in DocLink, you then will have an executed contract with the signature and a copy of the certificate of uh, authentication of it's been signed and who and when and so forth. And of course, this version control can be used for any types of document. If you're doing a financial report you know, in Excel, we have customers doing storing their AutoCAD drawings in AutoCAD format and able to go in and edit that drawing. And that DocuSign also is any document needing signing electronically, okay? which is you know from the last month or so more, and we're seeing more and more customers now signing electronically. So we're all working from home, but we need to get these documents approved and signed and so forth, and without having to go to the office and print it out and sign and scan it back in. Another big news of DocLink is sales order processing, and we find that in uh, for Acumatica customer, a sales order processing is big. You know, all the way from the quoting stage down to the payment stage. So, you know, you create a quote in Acumatica, okay? And then from there, that gets stored to DocLink automatically. Your customer sends you a copy of the purchase order or contract that gets stored to DocLink and it gets linked to the quote. You then will go to Acumatica and create the sales order and the order acknowledgement. And then of course, fulfillment of the order. So we're gonna show you and then finally once fulfilled, then of course you wanna send out a copy of that invoice um, to your customer and, in some cases, you want to attach supplemental documents, okay? So we're gonna show you this example, you know, like I said, capturing method of your uh, document uh, from capturing of your sales order, as an example, from Acumatica into DocLink. Uh, you, when you create the pick ticket and delivery ticket, okay? Um, Acumatica have the ability to add barcode to those documents. So the idea is they fulfilled the goods, they signed it, you know, uh, the, the goods gets delivered, Mr. Customer signed that delivery ticket. Now you just have to batch scan them all in and our system will read the barcode on those documents. The barcode will represent a sales order number. It will then look into Acumatica and pull over all the data and automatically store those documents away. So no data entry and automatic storage. Okay. 
And then once that's done, of course, is the delivery of your AR invoice to your customer. Now, your customer, when you send out the AR invoice, they want you to attach that signed delivery ticket with it, or they want you to attach the expense receipt that you're billing them for. Okay, those documents are living in Docklink. So our system is going to go and look for those documents and automatically attach it to the AR invoice and then automatically email it out. And then, of course, at the end of the day, is that those documents are living in Docklink uh, and able to go in and search for those documents at any time. And, of course, accessible in Academica as well. So uh, Igor is now going to give you a, 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 a little demonstration um, for the news in some of the area for sales order processing. So the 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 option that I just you know, the process I just described to you just an example you know the of what we find from what the customer your process may be this, uh, different, and the nice thing about our solution is that we can cater the process to your uh, 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 workflow. Uh, so we'll pass it back to Igor. Thank you, Laura. So let me share my screen one more time. And as uh, Laura mentioned, we'll show you the uh, the most prominent use cases that are utilized in the accounts receivable department and uh, what kind of extension of user vacuumatic can be used in this process. Uh, we can also again start in the sales order processing tab when the sales order is created and is being sent and distributed uh to uh to the customer who played to who sent, who sent you the order and in this example we're also going to take uh one of the existing orders and uh obviously if you create it from scratch you can do it at that specific moment as well so uh Docling has a capability behind it belt also same as with the registration of invoices register the orders that you receive in the electronic format PDF or let's say paper orders that you get and also process them through the optical character recognition and bring them in into the system and create you uh, these uh, these orders in the system automatically. So this is one of the things the system can uh, do for you. Now from here, uh, same as utilizing the reports, we can print and send the sales order quotes and the sales orders to our customers. When we print in that, um, same uh, processing idea as we had with the purchase order, it is being stored automatically into the Docklink document management, as well as at the same time being sent and distributed to your customer. So this is a, that that portion of the process occurs automatically. Now, when we are taking the step after that and we have the delivered order, so let me kind of scroll up very quickly and. Uh, uh, we have, for example, the order. Oh, this is not one of the orders. So we have an order sent and delivered. We same as the uh, same idea as we had the order sent specifically for uh, for the uh, we had the purchase orders distributed in the same way. The sales order confirmation, sales order acknowledgments can be distributed, and that order can be sent to a workflow and undergo workflow processes before an AR invoice is created, and then you are invoicing. Uh, for the goods that have been picked and sending origin, uh, sending the AR invoice alongside with the pick ticket that the, that the team has created, right? So the distribution occurs automatically and the process of accounts receivable and approval of the order and the picking of the order can undergo workflow with its own approvals and document lifecycle steps. When the document, uh, when the customer is invoiced, they will be receiving, as Laura pointed, an actual package of documents where there is an uh, there is a, an AR invoice and the pick tickets supplied to them with the items that have been picked, and um, we would have either the order sent uh, and the pick ticket associated with it, and we were also sending the AR invoices associated with it. With regards to uh, with regards to formats, as you can see in these examples, it's a PDF files that are being distributed and they can be TIFF files and other image formats. And when the time comes, as we, of course, this is a very important thing to be able to retrieve information, you can utilize the vast uh, and powerful tools internally in Docklink to review uh, documents and associated sales orders and find them for specific customers. So when we are utilizing the advanced search, 
we can easily uh, find our sales orders, find our associated files, and easily present them side by side in a similar fashion as we were looking at the t uh, uh, looking at uh, checks and looking at associated invoices. So when we are looking at the sales order, we can see which sales order and which purchase order is being used to fulfill it, and we can drill down the system to other associated documents, and when necessary, we can select multiple of them and open them for our review side by side. And they are all united by common properties, by the common parameters that system can use uh, very easily. So in the conventional method, as you can see, now we have all documents available for us side by side. All of them are linked together based on the sales order and what we place with our vendors to fulfill that order. We have the sales order, we have the associated purchase order, and we receive the goods, right? And all of these documents are linked together based on common properties. You no longer need to have file cabinets, you no longer need to have and look for them separately as Laura was showing to you and as we are showing to you today during the demonstration, single property which is for example the sales order number will unite all the documents together and be available for you to provide you the complete and utter audit trail that you can retrieve at any given time for your convenience and for your operational benefit. Uh, Laura, I will give the floor back to you one more time. Thank you, Igor. So in talk about the AR invoice, um, actually, let me just share my screen really quick. Um, is lately I've been getting a lot where customer they send out AR invoice, you know, as it's being generated, but at the end of the month they create a statement, uh, a monthly statement to and attached to that monthly statement, uh, they include the in all the invoices associated with that monthly statement. Um, so that's also another use case as well. Uh, we, I have also uh, a lot of customers, like I said, is they invoice by job, based on the job. And when they invoice the customer, the customer wants to see uh, all the receipt associated with that job that, that they're being billed for. So the, um, our, you know, our clients are storing the receipt in the system. So when they go in and create the invoice for that particular project or job, uh, we capture a copy of the AR invoice, store and doc link. At the same time, it goes in and looks for the receipt associated with that job, attach it to the AR invoice, and then automatically email it out to the customer. Okay. So, like, so we, you know, um, this is just a few examples. Um, there's many other areas like HR. Uh, because our system is designed for enterprise-wide news, our security is very tight and very granular. Uh, it helps our client, you know, um, comply with HIPAA requirements. So that's why uh, healthcare industry, pharmaceutical, and, and you know, HR departments in our organization like to use our system because of that main reason. Also, it's because we got also create different forms, electronic forms. So we have customers using for HR to create job application form, vacation request form, but uh, timesheet form, so that you know uh, employees could just go online and fill out those forms electronically instead of on a piece of paper or in Word or Excel. So these are just like I said, a few areas. Now. Some of the features or some of the function we talk about today, you probably sit there and thinking, but Acumetic, I have some of those features already. Agree, you are correct. Okay. But what's different and why our system, why we are a, a, a integrated partner of Acumatica is because our system has uh, can take you beyond the basic functionality. Okay. Is that because um, we one can store files in any format, two, it um, allow you to track your complete life cycle of the document uh, because of version control, check in and check out. Also allow you to apply retention schedule to your documents so that you can track those documents and able to purge it from the system. Okay. And also is uh, we have the OCR, the full OCR that allow us to do read down to the line item and do automated matching um, of the invoice to the purchase order and against the receiving. But also our OCR also can read other types of documents as well, like um, Igor mentioned, um, from reading the customer PO and pushing the customer PO data over to Acumatica to auto-create the sales order. Okay. Um, or auto receiving, you know, the, you're getting your 
um, your ship your goods in and OCR will read the data on your receiving document, match it against the purchase order, and push it over to the ERP to auto receive. Flexible workflow. Yes, I know Acumatica does have workflow and it's 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 good, right? But if for those of you who have uh, you know a comprehensive workflow process with business rules, like Igor mentioned, you know we can set up for manual workflow or automated workflow based on your business rules. It might be based on dollar amount, based on GL code, based on segment, based on project. Whatever your rules are, we can create a workflow template and have it routed automatically to enforce those rules. Okay. And of course, it's our searching. Is that now you can able to search for documents in Acumatica, but you can also search for document in DocLink, and it's searching for any types of documents. Okay, so I mean, I know in Acumatica is you're searching, you're only viewing documents that associate with that particular, let's say, invoice is invoice only, uh, or sales order is sales order only, right? But in our system is that you can search and it links all those documents together. Show me all the document associated project X, Y, Z. Okay, it may be a PO, it might be a receiving document, maybe a contract, maybe an invoice, but it pulls it all up together for you. Show me all the document associated with invoice number one, two, three, four, five. You have the PO, receiving document, invoice, maybe the payment. And we have the full text searching capability as well. Electronic form, you know, like I said, the ability to create form electronically instead of going away from that piece of paper or Word or PDF files. And then lastly is the automated delivery tool. We demonstrated to you several times today is to automatically email out the documents and supplemental documents attached with that with a simple click. Okay. So at the end of the day, just know that DocLink is a repository that's going to store all your data. There are different methods how you can store those documents into the system. We have the automated delivery tool. We have the workflow, comprehensive workflow for the tracking, routing, and approval, a full audit trail of those documents, and our integration with Acumatica. So we're, it, we are fully code integrated with Acumatica out of the box. So what does that mean? It means that you can upgrade Acumatica at any time or DocLink at any time, and you can rest assured that the compatibility, the integration are always intact. We are passing data back and forth between the two applications so that to minimize data entry. There are a lot of product out there and they will tell you, oh yeah, we can integrate with Acumatica. But they neglect to tell you through a process called screen scraping. It's kind of like integration at the surface level. So when you upgrade, you either the integration integration gets broken. So you as a customer will have to pay to redo that integration. Unfortunately, it's, it's cost that you're not going to be aware or learn about until it's already, it's too late, right? And also, we're going to give you searching flexibility within Acumatica, within DocLink, from the mobile app to your web or, you know, to the smart client. So I want to thank you for your time. I wanted to just conclude this presentation, you know, just to learn, you know, why did you sign up for this webinar today? Are you at the beginning stage of gathering data and learning? Um, did someone just, they, you you know, they, they heard about us, they heard about the, uh, you know, automation and want to just sit in uh, on the presentation? Uh, or do you have an initiative within your department that you're trying to get, you streamline and automate? Okay. And, you know, are, are you, uh, would you like to learn more? Thanks, Laura. It looks like we have a pre pretty even distribution between knowledge building initiative in my apartment, and we could use this right to learn more. So thank you for, so much, everyone, for your time. Um, so uh, on the screen here, you have, um, you know, if you'd like to have more information, you'd like to set up a demonstration, um, you know, uh, contact uh, SWK and they will be able to schedule an appointment and um, able to start, you know, start the process and working with you and getting you a demonstration preliminary quote. Wonderful. We'll now open it up for questions. If you have any questions, please enter them into the question section of your GoToWebinar. And we'll give that a minute in case any come through. And just a reminder, everyone, we do have subject matter experts here. This is a great opportunity to have your questions answered in real time. 
It looks like we do have a few that have come through. The first is, does DocLink store slash integrate with ERP vendor information? So if vendor information changes, those changes are picked up seamlessly. So yes, we can do it several ways. Is one thing is when invoice comes in with our OCR, we can verify against uh, Acumatica if that vendor exists or not. And if it doesn't, we can use Stocklink to gather the vendor information, and then we can push that data over to Acumatica. So that way you don't have to manually go into Acumatica and create them. Otherwise, if you want to just you know start uh, basic. Then once you've been notified, you can go you, your normal process today. You go to Acumatica and start gathering your vendor information and, and add the new vendor into the system. Perfect. Our next one is, is the application mobile friendly? Yes. Yeah, so uh, we are compatible with pretty much uh, iOS, Android devices out there. Um, on the mobile, you can search for documents. You can do workflow approval. You can even capture documents as well. And then the next one is, how many years of invoices do companies typically store in DocLink? There is no limit um, because what you store in the system, the data is yours. Uh, you can keep them off forever. Or if you have retention schedule, you can set up the retention schedule so the system will notify you. And then from then, you can get it plus and sign off before you purchase from the system. We do not limit the amount of documents that you store into the system. Perfect. And then it looks like we have one more that came through. What if I have workflow for documents outside of accounting? Does your workflow support other documents besides invoices? Yes, that's the, what's the big plus using DocLink is that once you own our tools, you can use it for the management of any types of documents. So yes, you can, you know, you have uh, a well, uh, timesheet approval, um, uh, job application approval, any document that needs to be routed around. We just need to create a workflow template for it and then voila. You can use it for the tracking and approval of any documents. And then we have one more that came through. Regarding the contract portion, can you also upload customer contracts? You can, so any type of contract from customer contract, vendor contract, employee contract. Um, we just need to identify what type of contract it is because maybe some, uh, based on security permission that certain people can only access certain type of contract or certain uh, contract only, so any contracts. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Laura and Igor, for your informative presentation and for taking the time to be here today. A note for our audience, we will be sending out a link to SWK's Business Survival Guide along with the webinar recording tomorrow afternoon. This is an excellent resource for best practices for working remotely in light of everything that is going on. For those who registered but were not able to attend, please reach out to your CAM or to SWK directly for access to the Business Survival Guide. Thank you so much for your time today. Have a wonderful rest of your day.